Hey guys, how are ya? Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. I just arrived at the employee parking area. Got my iced coffee. I just finished my breakfast sandwich. Uh, it's been kind of a stressful morning. Uh, I was in line at Dunkin' Donuts when I realized there's a car behind me and a car in front of me, so I couldn't move. And I realized, oh my gosh, I left my lanyard at home. And I, I have to get my lanyard. It's in my pocket. <sighs> All right, bye. So I looked over at the clock, it said 9.38. So am I the only one who intends on changing the timer on their clock in their car and maybe their microwave, but you never do. So you sit there thinking, well, it's 9.38, that means it's 10.38, because I just never change my clock. I just add the time mentally. Yeah, well, I freaked out because I have to check in at 10.58 or 10.55. <gasps> oh my God, I'm gonna be late for work. I lost my mind and I can't move. Somehow my clock auto-corrected itself. I don't know how. I didn't do it, but I'm not late for work. I've got plenty of time. I've got about 45 minutes to get from here in the parking lot into the airport. So plenty of time, but I literally had a meltdown. Insane. Uh, but um, I'm going to show you something to remind myself later on to tell you a little bit of a story time at some point during this trip. Uh, so yesterday, I'll tell you the whole story. But I had to get roadside assistance for my car. I'll tell you about that tomorrow. I have another opportunity for a meltdown. I have not had to call for roadside assistance for 30, 35 years. It's, I just haven't. I haven't had many cars. But I was in the parking lot of a Sprouts, which also happens to have a Goodwill. So I called for roadside assistance. They said it would take about an hour to get to me. No problem. I'll just browse around Goodwill while I'm waiting. I found this. Now, rem remember this. I'll tell you about this later on. It's an Ikebana vase. See the pins on the inside, that metal bit on the inside? That's where you stick a flower and or a series of flowers. You make an arrangement that stands inside this. I think it's a Japanese style of flower arranging. I just spit all over the place. Um, so remind me to tell you about this Ikebana vase. Remind me to tell you about that. It's a bit of a a story time. It might trigger a few of you, one of you in particular, I'm thinking. But uh, yeah, remind me to tell you about this story. That's going to be a layover story on this trip. But in the meantime, I'm going to get my butt into the air-conditioned airport. So I will see you later. Hey guys. All right. So after rushing, 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 I got to the crew room with plenty of time. Met my crew. I know two of the three people I'm flying with. Uh, I'm going to fly Lee up in front. I'm the most senior. Um, we have five legs today. I might as well work for Southwest. But uh, leg one to San Diego. Hi there, Stephen. Uh, is um, 48 minutes. I'll, I'll fly late. Thank you. Uh, 48 minutes to uh, San Diego. It's supposed to be bumpy, so the chance of us doing service is really slim. But we are catered. Uh, and um, full, full, full. 173. So I will see you in San Diego. And that is how hot it is on the aircraft right now. And it's only getting warmer. Uh, this has got to change soon. All right. Well, that was a nice flight. 48 minutes from Las Vegas to um, San Diego. Really easy flight. We have like 172 people, which is pretty full, but not completely full. We have 140 people going back to, where are we going now? We're going to Oakland. Oddly enough, I just got an email from the company letting me know about my flight that I'm supposed to be uh, taking to Oakland. It's an email from the company about my flight, but I'm working the flight. Very strange. All right. We'll be boarding in a second. So I will see you in, well, somewhere soon. <sighs> I, <laughs> hey guys, I'm trying to think, where am I? I think I'm in San Diego. We just finished our third flight for the day. So yes, we're in San Diego. Um, I don't know if I've had really had a chance to talk to you about our passengers, but it will not be a surprise when I tell you they have been amazing. This last flight in, in particular, we had some amazing children come on board today. Gorgeous, like lumin luminous like the moon. Beautiful, beautiful babies. Hi. Oh, no, worries. no, no, no. Don't apologize. Thank you very much. Uh, so, um, yeah, amazing children. So really, really nice. Um, the one irritation is that we had like 25 minutes between the last flight and this flight that we were just on. And we were taking advantage of that time to actually eat something. It's very difficult for flight attendants to find time to actually eat a meal. 
uh, without being interrupted by a call button or someone handing you trash or whatever. So we were taking an opportunity and the um, gate agent, I believe a supervisor, brought down a Leo, which is a, a law enforcement officer who may or may not be armed. Sometimes they are. It's not a federal air marshal, but a Leo could or could not be armed. You're never going to know if we have a Leo on board. It's not something a regular passenger is ever going to know. And they're usually boarded with pre-boards like families, military, whomever. So, but they have to be approved by the captain and all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. Well, they bring him down like 15 minutes before we're even supposed to board. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. He's a passenger. Why are we boarding now? It was the one chance we had to sit down and eat, but now we had a passenger on board and we had to now go to our boarding positions because while he's a Leo, he's also a passenger and we have to be in our assigned uh, boarding position. So it was a little frustrating, but we're gonna be boarding now. I see people coming, so I will see you later. Hey guys, hi. So I finally made it to Oakland. Oh my goodness. So the last time I saw you, I think I was in San Diego, I think. But uh, we flew from San Diego to Las Vegas. The flight, ah, I don't really remember anything, honestly. <laughs> nice passengers. I'm loving my crew. I'm loving my crew. I have the same chase for, for four days, so it's very, very nice. Um, the flight from Las Vegas here to Oakland was a lot of fun, partly because I was kind of slap happy because I'm so tired. Um, and we had some really fun passengers who had just, just, we had a lot of laughs. We had a lot of laughs. Good, a good time. We had one UM. Uh, we had 170 passengers, I think. I don't know. But um, yeah, it was a nice day, just long. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's well over a 12 hour duty day. But we made it, and that was the most uh, difficult, challenging day of this trip. So the rest of it should be fairly simple. Uh, I have been up for a little bit. Uh, I made a peanut butter and Nutella sandwich. I brought, uh, brought, um, double fiber bread with me this time. Um, my my customary uh, crystallized ginger and of course these. The same things I bring on every layover. Uh, so I just had some snacks and um, watched some YouTube videos and stuff. But uh, now it is uh, just about one o'clock in the morning, which is a normal bedtime for me, but I am wiped out after a very long day. So I'm going to jump in bed. The plan tomorrow is to go into San Francisco. That's the plan. I'm probably going to go uh, get off at the Embarcadero as usual, um, walk along the road there and either take a tour of Alcatraz or go on that little boat ride around the uh, around the bay. Uh, I think I did that last year and it was really a lot of fun. So one of those two things probably. So I will see you tomorrow. All right. Have a good night. Hey Paris. Well, Paris is taking a little bath with the party leg up. Hey guys. Hi. So it is uh, 1030 exactly in the morning and uh, I've had breakfast. I am relaxed. I am very comfortable in my new uh, Google shirt, if you remember that shirt. Um, I, I was planning on going into San Francisco, as I think I told you last time I saw you, uh, but it's 59 degrees right now in San Francisco. 59, yeah, it's the middle of June. Uh, and it's like 60 degrees here, so I'm not quite sure what to do because it's like cold and overcast and I really can't think of anything to do interesting so I hate to say I might be a slam clicker today in Oakland I I might just go for a little walk around here although there's not much uh, and then um, maybe just head back up to the hotel room fart around online play some video games maybe uh, my shuttle to the airport tonight is at seven o'clock or 7 40. 7.40 for our flight to Newark. We get to Newark about 5.40 in the morning. So if I just stay here and stay in, I could take a serious, serious nap before my flight and then get to New York and not have to sleep all morning before I go into the city. Because I do want to go into the city in New York. It's going to be about 80 degrees. 
and the weather looks like it's supposed to be pretty good. So I might kind of slam click in Oakland in favor of actually being conscious and fully uh, rested in New York. So I might do that. All right, so I will see you if something interesting happens today. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you later on. Bye. Of course, an hour after I decide to stay in Oakland, the clouds part, the sky is blue, it's 70 degrees, it's gorgeous, and here I am struggling with trying to be a slam clicker. But I realize it is uh, 11.56. It would be like 1.30 in the afternoon before I actually got into San Francisco if I went. And then I'd walk around seeing things I've seen many, many, many times, only to rush back and try and take a nap before my red eye to Newark tonight. So I'm trying to reconcile with being a slam clicker. I don't know why I'm struggling with it today. But um, I had plenty of time. So I figured I would share with you a story about that piece of pottery I showed you at the beginning of the video, the Ikebana vase. Um, and then I went on, I filmed like 25 minutes talking about the piece of pottery, how it represents a relationship I had in the past and all about that relationship and how strange that was. And I'm like, mm, this is not appropriate to the video that you're watching right now. So I figured I'm gonna hold on to that story time into the future and decide, have you guys decide whether or not you wanna hear about that part of the story. I am gonna tell you a little bit of it uh, and you let me know later on if you wanna hear more about that. And you'll know what I'm talking about when I get to the end of this short story I'm gonna tell you. I'll try and make it short, I promise. Um, so, so story goes, uh, the day before yesterday, I'm lying in my day bed, which is amazing. Uh, the sun is pouring through the, the living room window. It's um, the, the, the ray of sun is pouring over me and the cats. I have the cats sleeping on either side of me. It's like a blanket of sunshine. It was absolutely amazing. Then I realized it's 1.30 in the afternoon. I haven't even gotten out of bed yet. It's like the best part of being an adult. Um, <laughs> and I decided I need, to, I need to throw some cute clothes on and go grocery shopping. So I went over to my favorite shopping spot, which is a Sprouts grocery store, because they have amazing pre-made meals that are relatively affordable. They're delicious. They're handmade. They're great. Uh, and then there's also a Goodwill, of course, in that parking area. So... I drove over, I popped in Goodwill first because I didn't want to throw cold food in a hot car, right? So I popped in, walked around, didn't really see anything. Uh, and then I go to start the car, nothing. Click, 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 click. All the lights on the dashboard go off and not in a good way. And so I'm like, oh, shock, horror, fear. What do I do? Um, I haven't been in a situation like this in a long time since my little minivan in Florida died. Um, uh, I had no idea what to do or who to call. There's no one at Goodwill who's going to jump me, right? So if they jumped me, it wouldn't be a good thing. Uh, so I decide, um, I look over and there's a um, roadside assistance number on the window next to me. So uh, I'm within the three-year plan for my lease. So no worries. I called them up and they were fantastic. They were great. Um, the gentleman I spoke with said that I could expect a technician within the next hour, which is fine. He asked if I was in a safe place. I said, I'm in front of a Goodwill. This is my happy place. I'm fine. So um, I walked back into Goodwill just to waste some time. Didn't really see anything. So I popped over to the Christmas section, which is usually the last place I look. And I saw this piece of pottery, this green piece of pottery that I showed you earlier with the three leaves on it and that little texture. I picked it up and it looked so familiar. It freaked me out. I mean, it was like visceral. What, what is this doing here? I pick it up. I turn it over. It's signed by my ex-boyfriends and dated 2007. Yeah, I said ex-boyfriends, plural. Yeah, that's part of the story I was going to tell you. Um, but but um, my ex-boyfriends made this piece of pottery in 2007. I, I mean, I was still up in Boston at that time. I was living in Jamaica Plain in 2007. Actually, 2007 is the, the year I was stabbed. <gasps> that's such a long time ago. Um, so I picked this piece of pottery up and I'm like, my mind goes in 15 different directions. It was like Dr. Strange and the multiverse. I mean, my brain went 
all 50, 50,000 directions. And um, I mean, every memory of the relationship that that piece represented, uh, the good, the bad, what did I do wrong, the collapse of the relationship, and then how I kind of erupted from the rubble of this relationship into the phoenix that I became and a flight attendant, blah, blah, blah. Um, I sacrificed everything to be in this relationship. And all of this was encapsulated in this piece of pottery I was holding in Goodwill. And it was just the most surreal moment I've had in a long time. Um, so I, um, I bought it, of course. It was $5.99. I mean, come on. It's a beautiful piece of pottery. So, um, I, uh, bought it. I walked out to the car and, uh, threw it in the car. And, uh, the roadside assistance guy, AAA, shows up. It took, like, three minutes. He jumped my car real quick. Uh, and then he suggested I go over to my dealership or another mechanic and have them check out my battery. Uh, I called my uh, Honda dealership. I love my Honda dealership. I'm never going to own another car that's not a Honda. I I just have been taken care of by them. I just love them. Um, so they said, oh, yeah, run over right now. We have time for a walk-in. So uh, I drove over. They replaced my battery because it's within the three-year um, coverage. I had it replaced in September. I'm not sure why it had to be replaced now. But they said the heat in Las Vegas can really kind of wear down a battery. I don't know. But it was free. So I was covered. Um, and then, so I had this piece of pottery in my car. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I, I this story is so strange. Like, I do I share it with you guys? How much do I share? Because some of you really don't want to hear about me being as gay as I am. And I don't know why that's ever stopped me in the past. But... Um, so I'll tell you a little teeny bit of it, and then if you're interested in uh, the topic of the relationship I was in or the type of relationship I was in, let me know in, in the comment section below, and I'll, I'll tell you the story and my feelings and my thoughts and experiences around this type of relationship. But briefly, I'll just touch on it because I do think it's interesting, and I, I just have <sighs> people sometimes say, Stephen, you should write a book. Because, like, so many things have happened to you. This is kind of one of those things. Um, so, um, I went on a cruise in 2012 with my now ex, Stephen. Yeah, I dated a guy named Stephen. Every 10 years, I dated a guy named Stephen. 2000, I'm sorry, 1992, Stephen. We lived in Salem, Massachusetts. Um, 2002, I dated Stephen, who is a... A uh, little Mexican guy. Um, he's a pharmacist. Very funny. Uh, and not the fact that he's Mexican, but he's just a very funny guy. Um, and, and in 2012, I was dating Stephen in the South End. I mean, it was a mess. But he introduced me to cruises. Um, the cruise we went on was um, the nail in the coffin of our relationship. It just, it just solidified the fact that we really weren't meant to be together. Uh, a week in a little cr uh, a cabin, a uh, cruise cabin, can do that to you. If if it's not right, it's not right. So I broke up with him. Uh, but the next year, uh, I went on the same cruise with the same tour group. Uh, it was like a thousand gay guys. It's less dramatic than it sounds. The average age was probably 70 for these guys. So it's not a big party group, as you could imagine. Um, so it's like, it was a uh, celebrity cruises. There's a thousand gay people in this uh, tour group, 50 women. <laughs> the rest are guys, which is how it goes. Uh, and then the rest of the cruise ship was just made up of regular passengers. Uh, but the cruise experience was so wonderful. I loved it so much. The next year I went by myself. I went on the, this tour group they set me up with a uh, roommate to share the expenses of the cruise room, the cruise itself. Um, that person never showed up. Lucky me, so I have my own stateroom to myself. It was so fantastic. But on that cruise, I met people who would change my life forever. Three of them were Stephen, Juan, and Phil. Uh, now, if you know me, my story, you know you've watched my videos. Uh, that house in Atlanta where I stayed. Uh, for a short time. That was owned by Stephen, and um, he and Juan and Phil, I can say, almost saved my life at one point. 
uh, my life had really collapsed into a, a just a heap and they were right there to save me. They, I met them on that cruise. But I also met, um, I, I don't know, I don't want to use their names. I'll use Thing 1 and Thing 2. I'm not sure why I'm inspired by Thing. But um, Thing 1 and Thing 2 were potters working with clay. They're, they they, they uh, work with pottery. Uh, thing 1 was the pottery. Thing 2 was... Um, kind of the business person, the business mind. They took care of the numbers and set up schedules and all sorts of stuff within the, the studio, uh, you know, uh, mixing glazes and stuff like that, but also the business side of the thing where thing one was really more the uh, potter doing the, the work on the wheel. I met them and I was instantly attracted to them. I mean, instantly attracted. Uh, it was, again visceral. I just, I just related to them immensely. And it was, it seemed reciprocal on all three, on all three parts. Now this is, um, yeah, it was the beginning of a romance, which, um, the, the genre of relationship, I believe is called polyamory, uh, meaning more than one, right? Or more than two. Uh, so there were three of us and there was this, it was like a Hallmark movie in that montage where the, uh, the couple is drinking hot chocolate in Central Park and they're skating around and, and they're at the top of the Empire State Building and there's just a, little, a romantic montage of all their warm romantic moments and the kisses and the... Well, we spent a week, um, you know, the three of us in this oversized hammock with these gauzy um, curtains around us sharing stories of our past and our hopes and our our futures and our dreams and desires. And we just had the most amazing romantic time of my life. I've never experienced romance like this before. Um, I know you didn't expect this, did you? Sorry. Um, it was the most amazing experience of my life. And the day the cruise ended, I died. Part of me was going to die because I felt something I did not want to let go of. And it seemed reciprocal uh, on their part. And it was just extraordinarily painful. And we decided to see each other again and continue. Whatever was happening was going to happen. And um, um, yeah, so um, you know, we started a long distance relationship. I went down to visit them. They came up to visit me. Um, Christmas, that next Christmas, that was a year later, um, uh, they gave me a, a copy of their, uh, wedding ring. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know how I like to cry? You can't imagine how I cried when that happened. Um, but I got this ring. They gave me the ring and we were, we were a family and as, as we described it, we would also say we were a thruple because that was a trendy thing to say, but we just called ourselves a family and it was really amazing um but that ended and it's <laughs> i didn't even mean to go on that much about um that experience with that relationship but um i moved and sacrificed everything i gave up everything my recovery community work friends everything to move down to florida to live with these guys and be in this family and be a potter i became a potter and that's how i learned how to really be a potter and um Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All of that came flooding back when I found this piece of pottery that they made in 2007. And I found it at Goodwill in Las Vegas in the middle of a beautiful day in the life that I live right now. It just felt very strange. So that is my little story time for today. If you want to learn more or hear more about that relationship or what that kind of relationship was like for me personally, um, I can make a separate video about that. I don't, I've never talked about that before. Really, I think to many people, except for my closest, closest friends, but you guys are some of my <laughs> closest friends these days. Um, so yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I know you didn't expect to hear that. And I didn't expect to share that with you. But that all came from my little shopping trip at Goodwill. 
So now that I've shared that with you, I'm going to set some food in my um, Sabbath heat. I think some chicken parm, maybe. Uh, no, I think I'll have some pot roast. That sounds nice. Uh, and then I'm going to just pop on the TV, relax, hang out, and then probably take a good solid nap uh, in preparation for my red eye to Newark tonight. So yeah, there you go. Let me know if you want to hear more about that relationship or that style of relationship uh, in my own experience. I can't really speak for anybody else uh, in a comment section below. And um, if I don't think I need to say this, be nice. Uh, be respectful. If you can't be nice, be respectful. There's one person, and you know who I'm talking about? You, there's one person. You be nice, because otherwise I will hide you from my channel. <laughs> there you go. Be respectful. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all, right? All right. So, boom. See you later. Front desk staff is feeding Paris. How sweet is this? I love this place. Mostly because they take care of Paris. Oh, good morning, guys. Hi, it is um, 6.46 in the morning. We're waiting for our shuttle. One drove past us at high speed a few minutes ago, so we're going to have to probably wait another 15 minutes or so for our shuttle to the um, hotel. A little frustrating because I can see the hotel from here. I can see Russia from my backyard. Um, I'm a little delirious because uh, we're all very tired. It's been a very, very long flight. It was scheduled to take five hours and six minutes. It took probably closer to five hours and 20 minutes, if not a little bit longer than that. So um, turbulent for the most part. Uh, not horrible, but there was pretty constant turbulence. Did not stop people from getting up to go to the bathroom, though, which is one of my greatest frustrations. But I did my job. Um, let's see, what else, what else? Um, yeah, nice passengers, easy going. All, they mostly slept the whole time. So our uh, flight crew is the same as our last flight crew, our last uh, working flight. So yeah, it was a nice flight, I can't complain. Uh, one of my crewmates uh, pointed out my glasses look like the ones that Tony Stark wears on, which movie was that? Infinity Wars. Infinity. Oh, Infinity. What was the movie? Infinity War, the Marvel Cinema uh, Cinematic Universe. Uh, yeah, so apparently they're the same glasses that Tony Stark wore. And I'm like, no, no, no. And he showed me a picture. Yeah, look. I told you. Yeah. I mean, they look just, they're like exact copies. I think the ones he's wearing are made by Dita. These are made by that Chinese company I buy from, but uh, yeah, they're exactly the same. So funny. Oh, it's a very nice day outside today. The air quality in New York is normal, back to normal after those forest fires in Canada. Um, oh my gosh. So we did have to wait for a while for the shuttle. The first one that went by drove past us. They were packed. They were chock-a-block full of passengers. So we had to wait for our shuttle, but he was super nice. The driver was great. Getting to the hotel, the front desk staff is always nice. Uh, then I went over to get breakfast. You know, I always get the same breakfast here. Two eggs over medium with uh, bacon, some toast, and some home fries. Well, today, the very nice person at the desk there said, oh, I'm sorry, we just have a buffet today. That's their only choice. And I was like, oh, no. All drama and trauma. I'm too tired to even put food on a plate. I mean, poor me. Like princess in the pea, right? Well, she's like, oh, hold on one second. She went and got some to-go boxes that I usually eat out of anyway. And said, go ahead, fill it up from the buffet. Oh. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Ta-da! So I have uh, scrambled eggs. Bacon. Enough bacon for four people. A couple of potatoes because eh, I don't want to fill up on potatoes. And then two pastries. <laughs> I'm going to eat one of these this morning and I'll save another one for a snack later on and got some juice as well. So it's even better than the amazing breakfast we usually have. So I'm so happy. Um, I'm going to eat this. I'm going to crawl in that bed or this bed. I'm not quite sure. And then uh, go into the city at some point. 
I have no idea what I want to do. I really don't have any plans. And there's nothing that's new for me about New York. I know that's hard to believe, but I'm here so often. I mean, what do I want to do? I don't know. We'll see. I'll take you along with me anyway. But for now, Betty, bye. Good night. I'm going to eat and go to sleep. Bye. Good afternoon, guys. Hi. It is 1.50 in the afternoon here in Newark. Typically, on my layovers here in Newark, if I'm going to go into the city, I grab something to eat for breakfast, I get a quick hour or two nap, and then go into the city. Still dazed and tired, but I feel like, for some reason, I have to get into the city ASAP in order to have a nice time. Ah. The last time I was here, I didn't go into the city till like 3.45 or something in the afternoon. And I had a very, very nice layover. So I didn't feel pressed to run out of my hotel room right away. Um, fun fact, uh, people in my airline sometimes talk about our Oakland hotel, where I stayed yesterday, as being haunted. I've never experienced anything. Have you in our hotel, if you know who I work for, where we stay? I have never experienced anything in that hotel to consider it haunted, but people don't talk about our Newark hotel. Look at this. This is one of the many graveyards that are next to the hotel, literally next door. They're building more of these, I don't know, what do you call them, crypts? I don't know, they're like mailboxes for dead people. Um, but they're building new ones. That's the hotel. That's where we stay. They're gonna be planting dead people in these boxes, not 12 feet away from where people sleep, <laughs> who are alive. And people talk about Oakland like it's haunted. I think it's very strange. I guess I'm not getting on that train. <laughs> Here's my ride finally, after waiting an hour and 15 minutes. Hey guys, all right, so I finally made it to the city. The train ride is fairly quick once you get on the train. Um, I got off at 7th Avenue and I'm walking down through Chelsea, which is kind of where it used to be well known as sort of a gay neighborhood a little bit. There's lots and lots of pride flags, lots and lots of very attractive, physically fit specimens of the male gender. Um, and um, I have to tell you, I have to admit something. Maybe I should do a separate video about this, but um, uh, my physical health is not like ideal. Some of you have pointed that out. Um, it's in terms of my shape. I used to be strong. I used to be really, really proud of how strong I was. I had muscle tone. Uh, it, life is just easier when you have some strength. And I've lost a lot of that. I haven't been to a gym in like three years. Do I have a membership? Yes. Have I gone in three years? No. Does it cost me 20 bucks so it doesn't hurt that much? Yes. But just walking through Chelsea and looking at the guys who are my age, just in infinitely better shape, is kind of inspiring me to get off my tuchus and go to the gym. All right. So I'm not setting any goals. I don't want to set any expectations, but I'm going to try to get to the gym. I was going to say a little more often, but ever would be a nice start, right? All right, so should I have taken a left here? Yeah, wait, wait, hold on. Case in point, I mean, hello, I need to, I want to look like that. Maybe not like that, but not like this. There it is. It's called Housing Works. And I think the, the money that is raised is to support folks in the LGBT, HIV communities. Looks fun. Let's go in. Look at that. What's the like? Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Look at this. It's a piece of wall art. It's a bat. It hangs on the wall. It's $12. Mm -hmm. 
I couldn't film much in there because the music was so loud. Plus, there was this one guy who worked there who kept giving me the stink eye for filming, I think. But, uh, so, I am regretting starting my day so late because next to the thrift shop is the Rubin Museum, which I have seen but never been in, and I didn't know it was so easy to get to. But I think they close in... A half hour so I'm not gonna bother going in there but uh, this is definitely gonna be on my stop next time I'm here in New York I might just continue on through Chelsea and maybe get a bite to eat or coffee I'm not quite sure but it's just nice to walk around and not be in Las Vegas see the bird how cute is the bird so, I am still on 7th Avenue. I'm heading down towards Greenwich Village. Um, I think there is a recovery meeting at 6 o'clock at the Perry Street Meeting House. It's a, a recovery meeting I like to go to when I'm in New York City. It's a very strange place. There's, I think, a maximum of like 35 people are allowed in the room. Uh, very strange assortment of people, but all of them in some sort of recovery, you know, heading towards the same goal. Uh, and it's usually pretty inspirational. So I'm going to hit that meeting at 6 o'clock. Uh, but I'm walking by where St. Vincent's used to be. Now, St. Vincent's was a teaching hospital here in New York City. And when AIDS and HIV started to decimate my entire generation of gay men, um, St. Vincent's was like an epicenter of from the village in terms of a place to go and to receive care and not be... Uh, treated like you are garbage and uh, and I really hadn't even thought of St. Vincent's in forever it turns out it was demolished like back in 2012 or something who knew there's a park here and so I'm going to show you the park and uh, there is a spot where I'm going to read a little bit and you know my reading is a little tedious but no more tedious than my story about that piece of pottery right so let's sh I'm going to show you this little park it's quite inspirational I've, I will admit, I've already read something and been brought to the edge of tears. Uh, I hope I can get through it without crying. But this is the New York City AIDS Memorial Park at St. Vincent's Triangle. It's a beautiful little park. And um, I want to show you this sculpture over here. Now, from a distance, it looks like a, an obelisk almost, but it's... A closet. It's the inside of a closet. Coats, belts, shoes, boxes. Okay, now we'll come back to this in a moment. Okay. Remember that bird I showed you? The guy's over there and these pigeons nearby are very confused. Uh, but this is a piece by Jim Hodges. Now, I would say, I'm going to pause this and let you read it, but I, I really kind of feel like reading it. Inside a closet, time itself is frozen in contrasting meters and timelines. For those of us with the good fortune to have a place to hang our things, think about that, a closet is a magical container, a collection of materials arranged by each of us at a glance. Arranged by each of us that at a glance can reveal our values, desires, cares, even our deepest secrets. Time itself is frozen inside a closet in contrasting meters and timelines, fragmented in things accumulated and arranged in juxtaposed order, stacked and aligned, quickly thrown or casually dropped there to be taken care of later. The scene is set and the narratives that blossom come alive whenever the doors swing open, giving us a reading, a reminder, an understanding of who we are where we've been, secrets and dreams we hold, boxes containing our heart's contours, scribbled messages, scratched on folded notes and cards, photos, records, files, all the stuff worth saving for the reason that each thing signifies. All these choices contained in the holding space, the closet. I mean, really. <laughs> I'm just so that that the first line there strikes me um, only because I there has been a time where I wasn't lucky enough to have a closet 
to hold my belongings. But um, there are so many people in the park I'm in right now. Never mind. All around us. Think of the whole West Coast with this, the, 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 the epidemic of homelessness. If you're lucky enough to have a closet. But... Um, and in my vernacular, the, the older gay male vernacular, the closet is somewhere that we were, that we hopefully escaped. And my first thought when looking at that closet is that closet's full. There's no room for anybody to hide in that closet. But, um, and then that and all of this layered on top of its location of St. Vincent's, um, what else did I want to say? Oh, there's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jim Hodgins, he's from Spokane, Washington, is a contemporary artist whose sculptures and installations address issues such as memory, love, existential struggles through a multifaceted practice. It's a, uh, this called Craig's Closet is a newly created artwork imagined explicitly for the New York City AIDS Memorial Park which lies in the shadow of the former St. Vincent's Hospital and in proximity to many sites central to the HIV AIDS epidemic. This, uh, this replica of a domestic bedroom closet in granite and painted bronze invites viewers to forge personal connections between complex histories and individual and collective memories. The places art can bring you, right? And then, and then layer, layer something else on top of this. Look at these beautiful little girls. Look at these beautiful little children playing in this fountain on the site of St. Vincent's Hospital, which is the scene of such tragedy and loss. And here we are. All right, so I'm in the village. The heart of the village is still right down here. Isn't it quaint? It's so pretty. Uh, I am thinking of going into Zazie's for some pizza though, because I am very hungry. And the pizza looks very good. Oh, yeah. Hi. That looks fantastic. Look at this pizza. Look at the size of these pieces of jalapeno. I might be in trouble. But, uh, yeah, it's like, I don't know. I don't want to tell you how much I paid for this, but I'm very much looking forward to it. All right, so I'm in the heart of Greenwich Village. Christopher Street's right behind me. Uh, and you can see that they are preparing for Pride. Uh, New York Pride is on the 25th of June. And you'll see there's lots of uh, historical photographs regarding this area of New York. And right up here on the left-hand side of the street, is the Stonewall Inn, which is where all that business happened with the uh, riots here. That was on, I believe, June 28th, 1969. Uh, June 28th, you know, is my sobriety date as well, so it's a very, very important date for me, but that's the day the uprising happened here at Stonewall. Also, my sobriety date. So, very, very important date for me. Oh, guess what today is? Speaking of where I am right now, guess what today is? Some of you might know if you're like real Stephenologists. Today is my 35th anniversary of coming out of the closet. I came out of the closet June 18th, uh, 1988, uh, at noon, <laughs> there was a pride march, a pride parade. Actually, we would call it a pride march back then because we were still trying to demand uh, equal rights. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was the pride march on June 18th, 1988 in Providence, Rhode Island. Ta-da, so happy anniversary to me. I'm actually thinking of making a separate video about that maybe later on today. I've made a video about coming out in the past, but I don't know who's seen it. So I might think about doing another video later on today, but happy anniversary to me. So in a moment, I'm going in there for an iced coffee, but years and years and years ago, I think it was, it might've been this door. Yeah, it was this door. This was different, this was different. But years and years ago, it's now called Cellar Dog. Years and years and years ago, you would be able to go down there. It was a $10 cover charge. 
It was a $10 cover charge and it was a, a bar called Smalls. It was a jazz club. So you would go down there, pay your cover charge. It was BYOB. It was bring your own booze back then. And um, it was amazing. It was a little teeny cellar. I don't think you could be more than six feet from the stage at any point. And the music was amazing. Unfortunately, I was also, when I discovered it, I was also just hitting my bottom as an alcoholic. So um, I would go down there with a six pack thinking that would be enough for some strange reason. Uh, and I'd you know, listen to a couple of sets and then run 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 out here to try and find more alcohol because i hadn't bought enough i couldn't have carried enough for a night um and then i'd go downstairs they'd let me in sometimes sometimes they wouldn't but um yeah there's a, a lot of memories around this corner and right down here right down here is a place called uh um oh my god <laughs> leatherman leatherman new york city it's where i used to buy a lot of my leather gear for the very, very different life I used to lead a long time ago. All these memories around this little part of Greenwich Village. All right, so I'm going to get a coffee and then head over to Perry Street uh, Workshop for a meeting. All right. Yay. I had no intention on having a little tour of my history in Greenwich Village. So I was going to go to that meeting, but I ran into somebody who said there is a gay pride rally of some kind down there. So I'm gonna go check it out. Oh, ties. That is ties. It's kind of what you call a bear bar kind of thing. Oh, I've spent a lot of hours standing there hoping someone would talk to me. No one really ever did, but <laughs> I've spent a lot, a lot, a lot of hours at ties drinking and standing looking at boys. Ugh, I was a mess. Such a mess. Well, that was really quite inspiring. There were a number of young trans activists up there uh, and uh, really, really quite inspiring. A lot of the things they've been saying, though, were, were echo what we were saying 30 years ago. So it's really a shame that we're still fighting. You know, it's awful, but uh, really quite inspiring. Uh, I stayed there for probably a half hour or so. Uh, I'm down by the waterfront, this beautiful water feature. Um, back when I was a young man in New York City, this did not exist. None of this was down here. But uh, look how pretty this is. New Jersey's right over there. Look at this giant long pier. None of this <laughs> was down here when I was cruising the waterfront back in the uh, 80s. But uh, that guy's laughing, yeah. But uh, yeah, this this wasn't here. But uh, it's very pretty now. I'm gonna take a walk out there just for kicks. Oh, it is so beautiful. Look at the clouds. How gorgeous. Just a beautiful, beautiful day. It's getting a little chilly now that the clouds are in front of the sun. But we've got New Jersey over there. There's some sort of old fashioned sailing ship heading up this direction. Way down there. Alright, where is that? There you go. There's the Statue of Liberty. And then over there we've got uh, where Ground Zero is for 9-11. You know, I've not been there since, well, long before that tower was built. Um, I don't, I, I want to go, but I know how I would react. I'm just, I'm kind of afraid of what <laughs> the tears and the sobbing that I know would be inspired by visiting uh, Ground Zero. I'll make my way over there sometime, but not, not yet. But uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful day. Oh! <laughs> well, in just a few moments, the character of the, uh, water has changed entirely and you can hear the breeze it looks and feels like a storm is on the way so i'm gonna head in whew, it's very breezy i'm gonna head in the direction of some shelter in case i need it and then um head in the direction of the train back to the hotel so i will see you next 
back at the hotel unless something very dramatic happens. I'll see you then. Well, it looks like I'm here too late, but there's a park I've always wanted to visit. Uh, it's just right here. I think it's called Little Island. It is a little island built on the backs of what look like high heel shoes. <laughs> and it's kind of cool. It's closed. I think people are just leaving now. But uh, yeah, next time I'll head down here and check this out. <laughs> it's windy. I'm not going to go up there, but there is the High Line. I've been up there before. You've seen it before. Hey there. Kind of hot. Um, it looks like it's not that busy, but I really need to head back to the hotel. But if you've never been, it is uh, what used to be a, an elevated train track running along the Hudson. And uh, it is now a park, a full-fledged landscaped park with thousands and thousands of thousands of people walking <laughs> along it every day. All right, I just got off the train over there and I am walking through this lovely little park. I love this little park. I've got maybe a 15, 20 minute walk ahead of me before I get to the hotel. <sighs> oh, what a day. Uh, I looked at my steps. I have over 18,000 steps uh, from today, all in leather shoes with no socks. So <laughs> my feet are barking, I'll tell you. Uh, but uh, you know, as I walk through this park, heading back to the hotel, I'm reminded of one of the things I love so much about being a flight attendant is this whole country, every major city in America, I know fairly well. And pretty much every major city in America, I can walk down a very familiar street like through this park and feel perfectly at home. The whole country is my neighborhood. And that's does that sound familiar? If you're a flood attendant, do you know what I'm talking about? And if you're an international flood attendant, I'm sure the whole world feels like your neighborhood. Or, But it's one of the things I love about being a flight attendant. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna love about being a flight attendant is taking these damn shoes off my feet. Oh my God. Um, and eating. <sighs> yes. All right, I will see you soon. <laughs> fire alarm at the airport, but that means there's no line at Starbucks. <laughs> Look for the silver lining. Alrighty, so our plane is delayed like an hour. It's about 30 more minutes till it arrives. Then they have to deplane and all that stuff. So we'll be getting home a little later than planned, but still early in the day and that's fine. I'm just tired. I did not sleep well last night. Uh, but today, today, I'm not lying to you this time, today is my 35th anniversary of coming out of the closet. Happy anniversary. Uh, for some reason, I thought yesterday was the 18th. It was the 17th. Um, and I could have gone to that museum yesterday, but whatever. It's fine. I didn't. By the time I got back to the hotel room, it was like nine o'clock or something so that's fine um yeah so i will see you probably next time in las vegas hopefully knock on wood see ya well our plane finally arrived more than an hour late and then it has to have a security search done oh. <laughs> at this rate i'm not gonna get home till like one in the afternoon we're supposed to be back by like quarter past ten so whatever Whatever, it's one leg, we're going home, right? All right, knock on wood. Hey guys, hi. Welcome back to Las Vegas. I feel like Moses in the desert right now, I swear. The airport is way back there. My car is way, way back there. You can't even see it. And it's uh, in the mid or high 90s, I don't know. I'm complaining, I have to stop. Um, let's see, today, very long. It was a uh, four hour, 47 minute flight, I think. I'm not quite sure, but it was turbulent for most of the trip. And the majority of our passengers could not resist getting up during the worst of it. Um, <laughs> one passenger, and you know, I don't like to share negative stories. And it wasn't like negative, negative. The guy wasn't a monster. But, um, 
the captain told us to stay seated, flight attendants, and um, this one passenger chooses to stand up and stay standing, talking to his family. He's only sitting across the aisle. It's not like he was sitting in a different seat section, but he decided to stand up and I made a general announcement, another general announcement, then I made a very specific announcement, and then I got up and I was like, sir, please have a seat. And he said, get away from me. I'm like, oh, sir, I will. Just please do me a favor and have a seat. Pleasant. And uh, why won't you just get away from me? Go away. I, I mean, and he got worse. Um, not violent, just, yeah, yeah. He had a strange little accent too. I'm not quite sure where he's from. But uh, yeah, he's not used to a flight attendant loving him enough to ask him to stay safe, you know, whatever. But that's some big, that was the big, biggest problem, besides having no ice. <laughs> that, was the, that was the worst part of the day. Um, what else, what else? I think that's it. I think that's the culmination of the trip. I have this exact same trip, line for line, uh, the end of July. I might try to get rid of it simply because the first day is so exhausting. But uh, we'll see, we'll see. So uh, thanks for joining me. Thanks for being patient with all my little stories and anecdotes. And uh, I think that's it. I will see you again very soon. Fly safe. I didn't say it. Fly safe. Love you.